Hello, I'm Katie Sweeney. I'm a food journalist, wine lover, and home cook. And I am here at Francis Ford Coppola Winery in Geyserville, California. I'm thrilled to be hosting Taste of Sonoma at Home's All-Star Chef collaboration. Taste of Sonoma at Home has given culinary enthusiasts and vinophiles insider access to Sonoma County's renowned wineries and restaurants, all from the comfort of their own home. Although we had to postpone this event due to wildfires, Sonoma County's restaurants and wineries are ready to welcome you with open arms. It's business as usual up here, and as you can see, we have a beautiful day and an incredible lineup planned for you. Three local chefs are here, and they're cooking up a multi-course meal, three courses, with a very special ingredient, tomatoes. Chef Mark Stark of Bravo's Bar de Tapas is creating the appetizer. Chef Dustin Vallette of Violet Healdsburg is creating the entree. And Chef Tim Bodel of Rustic, Francis's Favorites, the restaurant here at the winery, is cooking the dessert. Coppola's winemaker Natalie Dale is also here, and she is pairing each dish with a different wine. These aren't your normal wines. These are wines from the limited production reserve collection. So we are in for a real treat. If you have the wines at home, open them now and start drinking. So why tomatoes? Tomatoes were chosen as the featured ingredient because there's nothing like an early fall tomato. Now is when they're in season and they're most delicious. If you've ever plucked a cherry tomato from the vine and eaten it, you know what I'm talking about. The tomato is warm from the sun, the skin snaps, and there's a juicy explosion in your mouth. Can you tell I'm excited to see what these chefs are creating? Now we want you to know that we've taken all of the necessary precautions to avoid the spread of COVID. We're all staying six feet apart, and the reason why I took my mask off is because I'm going to be eating and drinking very soon. One lucky viewer is going to win an incredible Dine About Town experience. Now this is really cool. You're going to get a gift card, a $100 gift card, to each of the participating restaurants. That means you can dine here at Rustic at the Winery one night, and then another night go to Violet Healdsburg. And then a third night, you can go to Brava's Bar de Tapas, or if you've already been there and want to check out one of Chef's other restaurants, Chef Stark has seven restaurants here in Sonoma County, you could go there instead. We're gonna pick the winner at the end of this program, so don't close that screen. The winner will be chosen randomly through, throughout the Zoom participants. We're gonna pick the name. And finally, we encourage you to follow along with the recipes. You'll find a link to them in the chat box. This chat box is where you also can type in any questions that you may have throughout the program, and we will do our best to get those questions answered. Speaking of questions, we've got a fun poll for you. Hopefully that's up on your screen now. It's three questions. The first question is, which dish are you most interested in trying? The second question is, who do you think is gonna over you the word delicious? I'm betting on myself. And the third question is, which restaurant are you dying to eat at next? Personally, Rustic looks pretty good. But this is enough talking, let's get cooking. Over to Chef Mark, what are you making? Hi Mark? Katie, how are Hi. you? Good, I'm good. Tell Listening us. to you talk about tomatoes, I'm even more excited. Me too. You hit it right on the spot. This is, uh, we're at peak season right now. You would think, you know, middle of September that we're on the tail end, but this is, this is when tomatoes are really tomatoes. So uh, what I've decided to do uh, is a couple of tapas dishes from our Bravas Bar de Tapas Spanish restaurant. Mm -hmm. Super simple um, and appetizers uh, should be super simple. That way you can kind of focus on your guests and uh, the entree and, okay. and dessert. Agreed. So these are two of my favorites. I know you've been to Spain. Yes. And not only do I love the food there, uh, but I, I love the way they present the food and how they eat the food. They eat the food uh, uh, as, as a group, it's it's a it's a it's a communal thing. It's very it's family not style. all about what you're eating. It's it's a, mostly about who you're eating it with. Yes. And so, these are just 
pure tomato dishes and uh, this is when the tomato really shines. The first one I want to do is uh, pan tomate or uh, tomato bread. Okay. It's a Catalan style dish. Uh, it's, you see it all over. There are different versions. Uh, I thought it would be cool to do some of those Spanish dishes here using Sonoma products. Right. If you go to Barcelona, you find this tapa at every restaurant. It's the first thing you start with. Yes. Absolutely. Pan con tomate. So uh, what I'm going to usually is just uh, uh, toasted bread with some garlic rubbed on it and some tomatoes rubbed right on the bread and some good olive oil and, and sea salt. But we're going to make a little bit more depth and roast uh, some garlic, which I'm going to do real simple here. I have a whole head of garlic and I've kind of exposed the top of it so you can see all the cloves. And then I'm just going to hit that with a, some good olive oil. A little salt. A little black pepper. And I'm just going to wrap that up for the oven. And we're going to put that in the oven. Our imaginary oven. Over there. <laughs> uh, for about 40, min for about 40 minutes. And then when that what comes... What temperature, Chef? About 400 degrees, 40 minutes. And what we're trying to do is just soften the garlic, uh, soften the uh, garlic flavor, and give a little bit of caramelization to that which is really going to make our pan tomate just a little bit more Sonoma-ish. Great. And then when it's done, this is, what you're, this is what you're looking at right here. This beautiful... I can smell it. It smells smell, amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah. There's nothing it, like roasted garlic. And it, it's so easy to do. And it, this, you could just have this with toasted bread and some olive oil and salt. They do that as well. Maybe a little cheese. And We got some. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is take these garlic cloves, they just kind of pop right out. And we're going to make a paste out of these. And you can do this the day before. Uh, the day of, it doesn't really matter with this right here. So we'll take all those garlic cloves out. And we're just going to give them a good little smashing here. Now what if you don't have a mortar or and pestle at home? What would you do with them instead? Use the cutting board? You can take this a little bowl and you can take a fork and you can just match this. All we're trying to do is break it down so we can spread this on our ciabatta bread. Got okay. It. So we have this beautiful little paste here. That's all good to go. And now we're going to go back to the center of the plate, the tomato. Um, like you were saying, tomatoes, it's a food memory for me. Mm -hmm. I remember growing back, uh, up on the East Coast and my mother used to pick tomatoes out of her garden and she'd bring them in and she would simply just slice them up, salt and pepper, and slather them in a little bit of mayonnaise. Yeah. Yum. I said it, mayonnaise. <laughs> it's delicious. If I you love haven't mayonnaise tried it, too. I love mayonnaise. It's a little East Coast, there but it is. It's I there. highly recommend it. That's when you really can tell when you have a, a, a good tomato uh, product. So what we're going to do is we're going to grate these tomatoes. It's super simple. It's what kinda, kind of tomatoes are these, Chef? My favorite, uh, beef steaks. Okay. And uh, these are a local tomato. I like the beef steaks. Uh, they're an all-around great slicing tomato, mm -hmm. but they also pack a punch as far as flavor goes. So you can do just about anything, anything with them. But with these two recipes, it's easy to interchange uh, types of tomatoes. So you can, hey, maybe I'm going to try some heirloom, heirlooms on, on my pan tomate this time. Kind of see what that's all about. Now, Chef, you've got seven restaurants. Tell us about them. Are they all open right now? How are things? <laughs> that's a lot of questions. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the how are things last. Okay. So seven restaurants. Uh, we, um, along with my uh, wife, Terry, we own and operate those. And um, they're all they're here all, in Sonoma County. They're all in Sonoma County, the Healdsburg, Santa Rosa. They're all open. We have outdoor dining in all of them, especially at Bravas. We have huge outdoor dining with a bar. If you haven't been, you have to go. With it's a bar. Beautiful. And they're, they're doing fine. We did have a little setback with the fires last week. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you can see today, it is beautiful in Sonoma out here in Coppola. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited about being out of the house and uh, cooking for so many people, even though I can't see you, some of you probably are in your pajamas still. That doesn't matter. We're still going to cook some tomatoes. Okay, great. What's next? Finish up these grated tomatoes here. 
And what kind of bread are you using? Ciabatta. Ciabatta. You can use any, any bread as long as it has the right texture. And the right texture is a lot of air pockets. What you want is a bread that's a little bit of abrasive. So when you uh, spread the tomatoes and the garlic on there, it really holds in all those flavors. Right. And since this dish has so few ingredients, do you recommend using the best quality that you can find? As far as, to, well, there's... Tomatoes, bread, olive oil, what you, else is you, in you it? You can't, with, with the Spanish cooking, there's so few ingredients and a lot of their stuff, you can't really hide mediocre ingredients. So right. it is all about the ingredient. We're using tomatoes, bread, olive oil, and salt, basically. Totally. So what we're going to do is we're going to drain off a little bit of a little bit of that tomato pulp. Okay. And would you use the tomato juice for something else, or what are you going to do with that? The second recipe that we're going to do, which uh, once again is all tomatoes, super easy, is the Samorejo soup, which I know you're very familiar with. Yes. You spent some time in the uh, birthplace of... Cordoba, in Cordoba, Spain. I lived there for two years, and that's where this, it's sort of a thicker version of gazpacho. It's where Samorejo, it's called, was born, and it's absolutely delicious. I can't wait to try your version. So we have the tomato pulp. We took out a little bit of the tomato water. We're going to season it up just a little bit. Okay. That's all just fresh tomatoes right there. And then we're going to go ahead and get our bread started for Great. toasting. So ciabatta bread. I'm just going to square this off a little bit. And then I'm going to put these on the grill. OK, great. And then I'm going to start my soup in a little bit. Perfect. Natalie, what are you going to pair with these tomato dishes? I'm glad you asked. Um, this was a particularly hard challenge because tomatoes are very acidic. Um, but with this dish, there's a lot of very simple ingredients and you really just want to let those shine through. On that side, um, I also thought of maybe adding a comp more complex wine. Okay. So I've added a very aromatic Viognier. Mm -hmm. It's so and, aromatic. And it's, I it's, wish you could smell this. It's a lot of white flowers, orange blossom. It's, it's like a garden in yeah. the glass. So we're pairing a garden in the glass with a very beautiful from the garden meal. And so I wanted to highlight the food, really. Now, it's not sweet at all. I don't know why I thought Viognier it might be a little sweet, but it's very dry. Uh, that's very deceiving, yes. Um, not all Viogniers are sweet. Um, you can make a dessert wine out of it, sure, but we like to ferment this dry. We really want to hold on to the natural acidity that's in the wine and the crispness, and just a really cold glass of this will hook you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it will, actually. It will. So, Chef, what are you doing now? So we have our bread toasting for our uh, pan tomate. Mm -hmm. We're also going to start the uh, Samorejo soup. Once again, just beautiful, beautiful tomatoes that we're going to puree. It's a, it's just a chilled tomato soup. Okay. It's similar to a gazpacho, right. but smoother. Now, okay, would you make this when tomatoes aren't in season? Probably not, right? No. I, uh, no. Okay. And what else? What You're putting bread in it. So here's our thickener. Mm -hmm. It's just some French bread, no crust. You can use a ciabatta, no crust. You can use other types of bread. Just keep the flavors really simple okay. so they don't overpower the tomatoes. Couple of cloves of garlic. Couple of tablespoons of good sherry uh, vinegar from mm. Spain. One. And you're using a Vitamix. If viewers don't have a Vitamix at home, can they use their regular old blender? Or Any, anything that purees. Okay, so they could even use a food processor. Yes, they could use a food processor. Got it. Probably if you did the food processor, you'd want to strain it after that. Okay. Because it doesn't get quite as smooth, okay? Okay. I'm just going to add a little bit of water, mm -hmm. but wait. I got that tomato water. Oh, right. Right? So why don't we just use that? That's Perfect. cooking, right? Yeah. Put that tomato water back in there. And it's going to add more flavor than water, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Mm. There's our beautiful bread And you're toasting. toasting it on both sides. Both sides. Okay. Okay, so we're going to season that up. A little salt. Here, a lot of salt. Don't worry about that. This is Tomatoes gonna... need a lot of salt. They do. That yeah. really just brings them out. Just right. brings it out even better. And what's that green stuff in that little bowl? That is herb oil. Okay. Typically, the, the, the garnish that they would use would be diced ham. And hard-boiled eggs. Hard-boiled eggs. Yes. 
But we're going to serve both these dishes with sliced hamon okay, great. and manchego cheese. I'm really excited about the hamon. So we're just going to let that go until that's nice and smooth. Okay, great. Take a break. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Hope you guys Cheers. are enjoying the wine out there. Cheers. Natalie. Yes. Tell us about the limited production. Well, these wines are very special to us. We will go throughout Sonoma County and look for the best vineyards that we think come from each sort of appellation. Okay, so, so where are these grapes from? This is actually from the Russian River. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Katie's Corner uh, Viognier. Katie's Corner. Very, very famous vineyard for Viognier here in Sonoma County. And of course we gave her her own, um, own bottling. So just to highlight that, we don't make much Viognier. So we try to get it right <laughs> when we do. Well, I think you got it right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So there's our soup. It's as easy as that. That's real time right there. That was wow. like three minutes for a soup. Uh, we're going to chill this. Great. Because in Cordoba, it gets kind of hot. It gets so hot. So this is going to be a lot better chill. And uh, when you come back, we'll plate the Great. tomate and mm. the soup shooters. Well, thank you, Chef. Absolutely. Let's move on to Dustin. What have you got going on? I thought we were serving wine today. I, I thought Mark was making us lunch. I missed the memo. I, so, I mean, I showed up, I had a glass of wine. I did make wine. you lunch. I thought you were making lunch. Like, I sat back, drinking some amazing wines. I thought we were all oh, going out fantastic. I'm here to drink wine. <laughs> Me too. All right, so, seeing the tomato theme, we're doing something kind of different. We're doing the entree. So, what we're doing is we're doing a seared ahi, and with that, we're doing a pasta, like a fettuccine. But it's kind of hot outside. We'll be some kind of avant garde. So, instead, we're doing a zucchini and squash fettuccine. So what we did was we took zucchini and squash, mm -hmm. we sliced them really thin, and we actually marinated them with a little bit How of olive How did you oil. slice it? So we used a mandolin. Okay, right? and what if you don't have a mandolin at home? Do you use your spiralizer? Spiralizer is super cool. That's actually been really popular. I remember back like 15 years ago, I bought one, and they were like $400. And it was like yeah. crazy like, you know, like what is a spiralizer? Now they're like Amazon for like nineteen ninety nine. Exactly. You know, <laughs> totally different. <laughs> yeah. So what we did was we sliced really thin mandolin. Uh -huh. We used a knife also. Spiralizer works fantastic. That little like threader works excellent. What about and could you use a, pe a vegetable peeler? You can use that also. The key is making sure you don't use the uh, seeds the inside. You okay. use the outside. So we did was use a little olive oil, salt, and pepper, and we're basically letting this kind of macerate. So what happens is, as it sits, we'll do a quick little zoom in there. So as this zucchini and squash sits, what happens is it starts to kind of almost melt it, like break it down. So you think about like what is a good fettuccine, right? A good fettuccine has a nice pasta, there's a little dente bite to it, you get a nice beautiful sauce. But we do this kind of backwards. So okay. we're gonna do a little seared aki with a, our version of a fettuccine, and then a little heirloom tomatoes, a little heirloom tomato sauce, and then an olive oil snow. Now, oh not gosh. the outdoors, the serrano. I mean, come on, Mark Stark had the big, huge serrano over there. I just got some like, you know, petty sliced prosciutto, but still kind of fun. <laughs> no, you know? this is an Iberico. It's not even a serrano, I right? I know, right? Thank you He's, for correcting me. He is yes. off. You're right, exactly. <laughs> I apologize. I'm learning so much from this guy. We're talking right. about the ham, like, in case you weren't familiar. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so the first thing we do is we got a pan, you got really nice and hot. You can use a cast iron. This is a pretty nice little pan here also. Okay. And what we did is we took a little bit of ahi. This that is Hawaiian. tuna is beautiful. It's gorgeous. So this is Hawaiian ahi, and this is a sashimi grade. So we use just the very center loins of it. And we put on there a little bit of salt, pepper, and a little bit of espelette pepper. So espelette pepper is actually AOC pepper from France. Okay. He's doing the whole Spanish theme. I'll keep the Frenchish kind of theme okay. over here. Um, so it's an AOC pepper from France. It has a beautiful little spicy pop to it, but it's not overly spicy. Don't think like chili peppers. Think more like harmo harmony and more like that toasty kind it, of is, smoky flavor. Is it readily available? Can people find it at Whole Foods? Yeah, Whole Foods, like a what would you, if you If you don't have espelette, what would you substitute? You know, that's a really good question. Um, there are a couple like ancho peppers. I really like using ancho a lot of time in cooking oh. because you know, ancho is a little different. The same thing, it's not really very spicy, and that's what you're going for. You want more of the flavor to go with it, not the spice. You're not looking for the heat. So as you can see, as we're talking, all we're going to do is basically just sear our ahi. We just want to sear both, all sides of it. We don't want to overcook the ahi. Instead, we want to cook the ahi about a medium rare. And this is, a fun, my favorite part is, it's a really easy summertime dish. So we have our ahi cooking over here. Okay. We're actually, he did his live in like four and a half minutes. I'm going to try to beat him. We'll try okay, to do like great. three minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our little plate, now, we have our zucchini and squash. Wait, but w I want to know what's going on with these tomatoes. I haven't, you didn't buy them like that. You did something. <laughs> no, we didn't buy them. We actually, it's kind of fun. We actually grew these in my house. Okay. And these are actually from our estate garden. Fantastic. So our restaurant's about a couple miles from here. And we have beautiful estate gardens. We grow heirloom tomatoes, and I just stole some cherry tomatoes from my house. But are they skinned? What did you do to them? So these are simply roasted in the oven okay. for a little while. You can, we got them all fancy. We skinned them ourselves because, you know, come on, we're all fancy up here. 
But you can also just take them, throw them in a pan, saute them, you can put them in the oven and roast them. What you're trying to do is concentrate that flavor. Okay. So tomatoes right now in the peak of season, the hard part is the tomatoes themselves are a little bit watery. So as you know, saw Mark was kind of like grating it off to get the pulp off that. Yes. We're doing the opposite. We're taking cherry tomatoes and we're actually roasting them. So okay. what we have is first our little zucchini and squash. So we're just going to take a little bit of our fettuccine, if you will, mm -hmm. and we're going to put this down. Really, really simple. Then we made a gazpacho, kind of like he was talking about gazpacho, but instead of using traditional, uh, all your traditional elements for gazpacho, we use very simply yellow and tomatoes right here. And we pureed it very similar to his, his tomato soup. And all we do is put a little bit of olive oil inside there. Is that what, it pepper. looks incredibly creamy. It I don't is, know if it's you fantastic. Can, that's from the olive oil? It or? is. So wow. we're just gonna kind of pour this around. Now what we're kind of playing around here is think about like a classic like fettuccine. You have like this beautiful like Alfredo sauce with mm -hmm. all your you know different elements of that. So this is our sauce. We're putting the sauce around the fettuccine. Then we're gonna take our ahi, which we're gonna cook just a little bit longer. Again, ahi, everyone has their own kind of interpretation how to cook ahi. I like to cook it like medium rare. I don't like overcooking it too much. So we'll cook just one more minute. Now we're gonna take our little cherry tomatoes and okay. we're gonna start placing our cherry tomatoes here. And what we're doing is basically adding a little kind of textural pop to it. But we're also gonna add this kind of sweet tart element to the dish. So the zucchini fettuccine, if you will, mm -hmm. has this kind of umami to it from the salt, the pepper, and just the body of the zucchini. These little oven roasted cherry tomatoes have this great textural kind of intensity to them. They also have great acidity left in them. Now, we're gonna go ahead and grab a little piece of our ahi. Chef, and tell us about your restaurant. I know that you put in a beautiful new patio. We did, yes. With a, like, all of the restaurants here in Sonoma County, we got closed down indoor dining. Mm -hmm. So we got all crazy ambitious and we went and built a big outdoor patio. And I mean, look where we are right now. I mean, this is a gorgeous day. Yeah, it's beautiful. You can't see because we're in the <laughs> real umbrellas here, but it's like 85 degrees. This is like the absolute perfect weather for all fresco dining. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think all of California is. So our little area right here in downtown Hillsburg, actually right next to Brava's, about five miles from here, is just fantastic for dining. So we have a complete outdoor patio. It's just fantastic. And they're still the doing a to-go menu as well. I don't know we if are. you follow him on Instagram, you can see some of the amazing dishes like chick harissa chicken, a sous vide prime rib or something. I don't know, it all sounded so delicious. Exactly, we're doing all of those. So we are still near to-go menus. We're also open to our regular a la carte and also our tasting menu. Fantastic. It's kind of fun. Okay, so notice how we basically just sear the ahi real quick. Let's cook that perfect medium rare. So you think about the flavors. You have the beautiful heirloom tomatoes, even the bees like it. So the beautiful heirloom tomatoes for that nice sauce, that that, that emulsion, if you will. Okay. Then you have the nice acidic pop from the cherry tomatoes we roast in the oven. Mm -hmm. You have the umame from zucchini and squash. So now we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of Hawaiian sea salt on top. Okay. A couple little threads of our Esplet chili peppers. So we took these guys and we actually sliced them really thin. We dehydrated them in our dehydrator. What it does is it adds this great little kind of textural pop back to the, the dish and it has a little bit of spice element. So if you're recreating this at home, you just leave it out? Yeah, you can leave it out. You can also put it in there. You can also buy them, super easy. A lot of times Whole Foods is a fantastic resource. Yeah. Okay. So now this last part, this was not our recipe. This is the ambitious part for home. So you can use olive oil, it's fantastic. The other thing you also do is we took a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. We actually use Raffinelli, local winery, makes fantastic olive oil. Okay. And we actually mixed in a little bit of tapioca. So dried out tapioca, we pulverized it really fine. And what happens is it comes out this, what we call olive oil snow. So wow. we basically put on this, all the flavors of olive oil, but what you have is a light fluffy version of it. Again, we call it olive oil snow, kind of a little fun, but it adds a beautiful look to the dish. Yeah, it's beautiful. And think about that. And that was what, three or four minutes start to finish. And that is the best part this time of year. It's sitting outside, having fresh tomatoes, having a fantastic glass of wine, and really just enjoying the all-fresco lifestyle we have right now. Well, cheers yeah. to that. Cheers. Absolutely. Yeah, Natalie, what, what are we cheers. drinking? <laughs> we are drinking our reserve Chardonnay, and you may think, well, Chardonnay is kind of basic, but with this dish, I think you want to stay a little bit more neutral. And the flavors that I was thinking of remind me very Hawaiian, and the all of the lovely oak characters that you're getting from the Chardonnay uh, kind of remind me of maybe a Hawaiian bread. I so like that. that lovely toast, that lovely vanilla um, kind of light sponge. Definitely. There's a, a lovely acidity in this wine um, as well to pair with the ahi. There's, I mean, that that's going to be a kind of more of a fatty character, right? It's just going it to be is. heavy. And I think Chardonnay is fantastic because you have that little kind of toasted elements, right? You yeah. get that because it's not a little bit malolactic inside of that Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. So you have that kind of toasty little doughy elements, but also because the olive oil kind of brings it back up and that umami from the zucchini and squash. Yeah. Think about like a traditional fettuccine. 
you have that density, you have that pasta. This, which we'll taste a little bit later, this has that, that umami, that, that mm -hmm. bite to it. So yeah. I think the Chardonnay is fantastic. And also just the aromatics of the wine is beautiful. Yeah. So, Chef, fantastic we have drink. a question from viewers. Uh-oh, we have a Maybe question. Maybe for both of you. What's the best way to seed uh, a tomato to get the seeds out? Oh. Uh, Mark, you go first. What do you think? Right here. Let me just show you right now. That's okay, super easy. It. You cut it in half. You see all the seeds right there. What you do is just take a little dish and you put your finger in the middle and you just kind of squeeze right there. And they all come right out. And they come right out. Okay, now now we're gonna go one for ones, okay? That was a great little technique. Okay, now I'm gonna show a different this technique. Is fun. That's how, going exactly. head to head. That's how we used to do it on the farm. <laughs> on the farm? <laughs> I like it. By the way, the farm of like, what was that? Jersey, the Jersey farm? <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing. These are heirloom tomatoes, right? right? So an heirloom tomato is a little bit different, but we'll do very similar. The way I like to do it, which is a good way of doing the squeezing that way, but I usually take it and I take my knife and I cut little strips right here on the outside. He's and then, a little fancier. <laughs> not at all. Then it just comes right off the seeds. Now, the advantage of this is depending on what you're gonna do with the tomato, if you're gonna puree it or like pulverize it, that's fantastic, like his soup. If you're gonna dice these up, then you can take this and you can cut these perfect little strips right here and you have this perfect little kind of flat surface to work with. So tomato, tomato, potato, potato, same thing, right? Beautiful. All right, that was a pretty good little technique, right? Yeah. Two different ways, two different <laughs> approaches. I Which like it was it. quicker. It was, that was both pretty good. I don't know much uh, You know, I'm from that hey, get her done. <laughs> okay, I love it. We're gonna pull up the poll again, so you guys can have another minute to answer the questions. Uh, which dish are you dying to try? Luckily, I get to try them all. <laughs> and uh, who do you think is going to overuse the word delicious? Maybe one of these guys. <laughs> and which restaurant are you dying to eat at? Okay, and then we're gonna move over here next to Chef Tim. Hi, hi Katie. Hi. How are you doing? Welcome to the winery. Thank you. Great to have you. I'm okay, so Chef. Yes. You are doing dessert with tomatoes. I'm yeah. a little skeptical. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. You know, it's an unconventional ingredient to use in a sweet preparation. Exactly. Uh, but for me, you know, I tend to lean towards desserts that maybe not overly sweet. Um, and therefore, you know, more wine friendly and, and to me, you know, not bogged down with a ton of sweetness. So uh, heirloom tomatoes at the peak of the season, which we are right now, um, I think really lends itself well to uh, to a dessert preparation. OK, um, we, you know, we're going to be doing a crostata today, uh, but uh, I had another recipe in the works, which was for a tomato gelato. Oh. which really came out delicious. So Interesting. We, yeah, so we took the flesh of some tomatoes and cooked it way down pureed it with a gelato base, strained it, and then spun it in a gelato machine. And that cool. came out great. Okay. So that's another uh, neat idea for a, a sweet tomato preparation. Now, what's the difference between, uh, this is a, a crostata. Crostata. What's right. the difference between that and a pie and a tart and a galette? Great question. Um, a crostata is very closely related to a galette. In fact, they're basically the same thing, but they're from two different cultures. Okay. So a galette is French, and a crostata is Italian. Um, right. Now you can take it in either a sweet or a savory direction, um, but they're both free formed, right? So a pie would have a, a, right. the dough lined on the inside. It's a little more a, forgiving for a novice baker. Exactly. Yeah, and especially me here at the winery in a, a restaurant, Rustic. I mean, it's all about Rustic and, and everything you Oh yeah, do it is here. very Rustic. Yeah, so Wait, so is, tell us about Rustic. It's yes. called Rustic Francis's Favorites. Absolutely. Are they really his favorite dishes or? Yeah, well, the best way I can explain it is, um, I try to recreate these memorable food experiences that Mr. Coppola has had over the course of his life. Okay. Right, so my job here at the restaurant and the winery is to uh, create this sort of amazing feeling in our guests that Mr. Coppola experienced when he ate these dishes uh, in his life, whether they're dishes from North Africa or Italy, of course. Um, so yeah, the, the menu is peppered with does all these- Does he come back from a trip and say, I had this amazing lamb. He does. Let's make it. He sure does. He okay. may bring a lamb with him too. Oh, wow. you, know, you never know. <laughs> uh, Great. Yeah, but you know, he, he, he's, uh, he gains a lot of inspiration through his travels and people that he meets. And, uh, and food that he enjoys. So that's sort of the, the concept behind the restaurant. Um, but we do have an amazing edible garden uh, right outside the back door of the restaurant too. So, um, you know, we try to offer daily specials uh, whenever we can, uh, really motivated by what's coming out of the garden and, and what's right. looking seasonal and that kind of thing. Cool, yeah. so what are you gonna make? Okay, so um, we have right here, this is a, uh, it's a basic uh, galette dough. 
Um, so that's flour, salt, and ice water and butter. Now, okay. now the key to this uh, recipe with most um, flaky crusts like this is is you want the you know the big pieces of butter right. to be able to be seen inside the dough. You want it to be cold. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You want it to be very cold, and you want to see those pieces of um, fat in there. It'll make it a real fluffy, like a biscuit or a nice flaky What's crust. What's the other flakes? Is there some herbs in the dough? Great question. Yeah, that's fennel pollen. Okay. Um, so that is uh, just harvested from wild uh, fennel. So when, when the fennel plant grows, just like uh, most plants at some point, it'll see, it'll go to flower. And then at that point, you can harvest the fennel And pollen. can you get that at, say, Whole Foods, fennel pollen? Absolutely, Or yeah. if, if, if you took, if you had fennel seeds and you put them in your spice grinder, would, then it would be fennel pollen? Definitely. Okay, great. Yeah, but you can really add any kind of uh, spice or herb you would like to the dough. Um, you know, you can put uh, chopped basil in there or a dried oregano or any of those uh, complementary flavorings, um, whether it's an herb or a spice that you think would go well with tomatoes okay. uh, or uh, some mascarpone cheese. So, um, f first things first, uh, when it comes to making uh, these tomato tarts, whether I'm making a savory or a sweet preparation, um, I want to salt them a little bit. Okay. And what that salt does, after I slice the tomatoes, I'm going to season it a little bit and put it on a, a little tray like this. And that's what, salt. what is that tray? It's got um, cheese is, cloth? Yeah, or? this is a, what would be called a quarter sheet tray with a rack. And then the rack is just lined with a little cheese cloth. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we have some great uh, uh, tomatoes here from our garden. This is a uh, Berkeley tie-dye, which is one of my favorite <laughs> uh, local varietals. This is a purple brandy wine, uh, green zebra, and an early girl here. But our tomato, like these guys were saying, and, and by the way, I'm just so thrilled to be here with you, Katie, and oh. two of my absolute most favorite chefs in the county, and two of the best chefs and restaurant tours around. So, Aww. thank you guys for coming. That is uh, Are just you an honor to have you Thanks guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to use a mix of the tomatoes in the I tart? I think so. I okay. think so. Yeah. They're, they were they're all this stuff. We got a little basket here that we harvested uh, this morning, and all these tomatoes were just harvested. So, like you were saying, I mean, they're still warm. They haven't hit a refrigerator yet, um, and they're just ultra sweet and ripe. So we're going to prepare them in a, in a very similar fashion. Um, so. We're going to take about a quarter inch slices. Seeds or no seeds? Seeds. Okay. Yeah, seeds are fine. Um, so we're going to take about, um, actually, where's my other knife here? These tomatoes are so ripe. Um, we're going to take uh, about five slices of uh, these different varieties of Right, tomatoes. and using the different varieties is going to make it look really pretty, I yeah, feel like. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Natalie, what are you pairing with this? We are going to pair the uh, Reserve Syrah with this. This is from Nimble Vineyard and it's in the Dry Creek Valley, which is just over the hills here. We are in Alexander Valley, so you head over the hill uh, and that's Dry Creek and they're known for their deep, dark and stormy reds. Uh, so a lot of great zin comes out of Dry Creek. We found this terrific vineyard that makes really amazing Syrah. And I just thought that the, the barrel tones in this Syrah would play really well with more of a dessert mm. dish because when you get those um, beautiful, that beautiful French oak has a really warm vanilla, almost toffee-like kind of character. The wine already has a lot of lovely black, black sorry, blackberry and pepper. So that's gonna kind of lift up the this dessert, I think. Um, and it's gonna also play with the, the sweet characters in it too. So hopefully that's um, a good And what about the temperature? <laughs> it's, it's pretty hot out here. I know that there's a trend of chilled wine that's going around right now. How do you feel about that? Chilled I'm, red wine. I don't feel good about chilled red wine. <laughs> okay. I know some people think it's fine. Um, and it is, you know, if you're in a humid area, go ahead and put an ice cube in it. I'm not judging you. <laughs> but for me, I think just chilling it will subdue a lot of the aromatics that I, I work so hard to kind of express and show off in the bottle. So if you can taste it at the right temperature, do so. If you really have to use an ice cube or chill it down, I understand. I'm not going to be offended, but that, this is the way I like to enjoy it. Awesome. And I did record you saying that. <laughs> Just on the same page. I did record you saying you put ice cubes in a wine. <laughs> this will be blackmail for the next Oh, episode. no. <laughs> Remember that time back in September when we were doing that live shoot? And you said you put ice cubes in a wine. Yeah. I'm I'm taking three bottles of wine every month. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely wouldn't do it to our reserves, but I, I think there's some great table wines out there that are just meant to be drunk and have fun with food right. and not meant to be serious. So, yeah. Now, question. Yes. What 
is your favorite? There's lots of you. You were t mentioned the different types of tomatoes. Right. Let's talk a bit, a little bit about those. Yeah. What tomatoes are good for one thing versus not good for one thing? Well, Chefs, do you want to all weigh in on this? Yeah. What are your favorite tomato varietals, and what do you use them for? You know, I'm gonna jump on the. You jumped on last time, so yeah. I, I love heirloom tomatoes. Like I love cherry tomatoes for this textural pop. We did this because it's more simplistic, right? In my house, we use cherry tomatoes for my kids. They go outside, they pick the cherry tomatoes and eat them fresh. I'm not a heirloom tomato guy. Um, He's got all fancy names and stuff. <laughs> I've been saving seeds for the past like seven years. So okay. Ours are all kind of intertwined. We try to keep them separate in our garden, but they do kind of cross breed a little bit. Um, and I, I'm a big, big supporter of like a dry farm tomato. So what we do is we actually start our tomatoes up like normal. We basically cut the plants back to about six feet high. And then we actually pick off all the flowers for the first about three weeks to really intensify the tomato. Kind of how you do for grapes, how you're thinning out the, the right. clusters. And then for us, what we do is about halfway through the season, we cut the water about 50 percent and then right now no water whatsoever so the tomatoes are actually starting to shut down but they get this really intense beautiful flavor what we do is we take the most robust looking tomatoes we save those we dry the seeds we do the whole process and we start that process about seven years ago so we're kind of using the same heirloom seeds ever since oh cool so and does anybody can their own tomatoes does red, any... red yellow and greenish <laughs> <It's laughs> okay. not all these fancy wines you know, zebra bark leaves Right. Stuff back. <laughs> Berkeley tie dye. Yeah, I think it was. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Canning, canning tomatoes? You asked yes. about canning tomatoes? Yes. Yeah. No, we're chefs. That's, we're going to reserve that for when we're grandpas. Great. <laughs> and you know what? We all can't wait. Perfect. To stay at home, can some tomatoes. <laughs> okay. Back to the crostata. All chef. right. So here we go. We have uh, uh, one of the uh, crostata. Doughs rolled out here. It's about uh -huh. an eighth of an mm -hmm. inch. You're making thing. individual ones. Exactly. In case the viewers yeah. didn't know. Yeah. And uh, so it's about eight inches in diameter. So these tomatoes here, I have a couple slices of each one of these varieties. I've salted both sides and now okay. they've drained. So I usually let them drain them about 30 minutes or an hour. So that'll help uh, purge some of the uh, moisture. Seeds? Uh, just the moisture actually okay. that's inherent inside these tomatoes just because they're just perfectly ripe. Um, and it'll also help firm up the flesh a little bit throughout the uh, cooking process. So it's almost like they're being slightly cured a little bit. So instead of turning totally to mush, it'll hold up a little bit with that texture. So at this point, it's real easy. You want to layer um, alternating uh, tomato and fresh basil once again from our garden here. Okay. And we just do tomato, basil, tomato, basil, so on and so forth until we have um, all these tomatoes piled in. You want to leave about a one inch or inch and a half perimeter. It's around, very pretty. Thank you. Around the uh, outside of the uh, pastry crust here. And that, uh, that allows us to make that crostata shape. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pull it up like so and then sort of go all the way around the crostata like this. Just like so. And then that's it, Make right it and, and what's yep. this uh, this beautiful frosting? So that, that's going to be a whipped uh, mascarpone that we're going to um, whip together just with a little powder sugar and some honey from our estate honeybees. Great. Um, well, just for a little sweet uh, component to the dish. Awesome. I can't wait to taste it, which we are going to do in a minute. Uh, let's check on the plating of the other chefs. I think I found some of your okay. over here. <laughs> Get back to your house. <laughs> So I'm just finishing up here with the uh, pan tomate. I got my roasted garlic. I'm going to spread that all over. Get a nice base. And then we have our strained tomatoes, which we lightly season with just a little bit of salt. And add that on. And then my favorite part right here. Good olive oil. Don't be shy with the olive oil. And some, we call this in the business finishing salt. It's just a flaky salt. We don't really cook with it. You finish with it, so you get that nice oh my God, the fresh saline flavor so and also some the texture. Price point on these? I guess I should wait till. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be. And then uh, we are over here, yes. and we're gonna serve that pan tomate with some uh, jamon iberico and some manchego cheese. And our soup, we set up a nice little ice uh, tray here just to keep it chilled, make it kind of sexy looking. And we're going to finish that off with a little bit of herb oil made with basil and parsley and chives and just a little drop on each one. It's going to give it a little herbaceous 
And then maybe a little bit on the ice, huh? You want a little, you want a little herb slushy there, some Italian ice. A la Spain. There you go. Pantomat Samarejo Soup Shooters. Super easy, lovely, delicious. So you've got your whipped mascarpone? Exactly, yes, yeah, so that's a little mascarpone cheese with uh, honey from our uh, state bees, a little bit of powdered sugar. So it's not an overly sweet dessert which is kind of what I like. You know, it's not that right. really sugar bomb. So I, I think can't it's going to go it. great. With and Chef, how long did you cook these for? They've got a beautiful golden crust. Thank you so much. Um, so they go 45, oh no, I'm sorry, 35 minutes at 450 in an oven without a fan. So kind of a slow oven, Okay. 450 degrees. So kind of a hot oven uh, for about 30 minutes. Okay, great. Thanks. Back to Natalie and the wine. Okay. Natalie, why don't you tell us a little bit about these labels? Okay. What's going on here? Okay. So this, these labels are um, paintings from a good friend of Francis Ford Coppola, Dean Tabalaris, and he worked on. He was a set designer for um, The Godfather, and oh, cool. um, so he's used them in other movies, and they're good friends and um, very beautiful paintings. And we wanted to showcase them as sort of our, a part of our reserve line because they are special to Francis. What other varietals are in the reserve line? We have a uh, Cabernet, we've got um, Pinot Noir, and we have a Petit Syrah. And the best place to find them is to order them here from the winery? Yes, you can order them on Francis Ford Coppola uh, Winery .com. Very easy to ship to you. Um, every once in a while they'll have some deals where it's free shipping or, or something happens and magic happens. Magic arrives to your doorstep. Okay, now for the poll answers. Everyone really wants to taste Dustin's ahi, which he's plating right now. Yeah, buddy. And everyone thought I would use the word delicious too much. We haven't even tasted it, and I'm probably going to say it like five times. And then it was a tie between the restaurants between Ballette and Bravas. So come up here and try all this delicious food and this delicious wine. And chefs, are you gonna bring your plates up so we can taste them? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, in the meantime, let's talk a little bit more about these wines. Sure. Natalie, what is your philosophy for pairing wine with food? I think it's easy to pair a light wine with a lighter dish, and that, that's a very, really great go-to if that's your comfort zone. I think when you when you think about the flavors, I don't want something contrasting too much, but yet I want something that'll showcase either the food or the wine and kind of go in harmony together. So for, for picking something for the soup, um, mm -hmm. I wanted something like a garden because this this is going to be very simple, a lot of, lot of simple ingredients. You just want the tomatoes to really show through in this dish. And so why not pair a garden-like wine with something straight from the garden? So that's why we chose this Viognier here. I Great. can't wait to taste it. Should we try it? Oh, yeah. I see some shots. I, I love your presentation. <laughs> it's so pretty. A little, will you give one to Natalie? Natalie. Thank you. That looks gorgeous. There you go. Ooh, that's and you got the good. herb oil on top. Yeah. After you try this, they might want to reconsider the tuna. <laughs> oh my God, it takes me back to Spain. It's so delicious. Super simple. Very fresh. Yeah, it tastes like summer. 
Wow. And it has a sort of a richer, thicker texture than a traditional gazpacho. Yeah. Because of the bread, right? Mm -hmm. That's a great trick. I'm gonna try to remember that. It's lovely. And then what about the pan con tomate, chef? Should we try that? Hold on, Mark, you didn't do all the dishes? <laughs> Mark, you gotta show off all your dishes, bud. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Uh, hopefully you got a lot of olive oil, a lot of salt Beautiful. on there. It's so, okay, I just love eating this stuff. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, here goes. Mm -hmm. Just really let them shine through, it's so good. The tomatoes. Easy to eat. And the roasted garlic, it really does it make does a difference. It does make a difference, doesn't it? Yes, it's <laughs> wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but you know, I'm, I'm just saying like, we have like seared ahi over here, cherry tomatoes. But, I mean, there's no competition though, right? <laughs> no. There's no competition here at all. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so this one goes with the Chardonnay, right? Except we don't have silverware. So to play with the richness of the ahi and the complexity on this dish, I thought the Chardonnay would go really well. Again, kind of going back to, this could be like a Hawaiian bread in a bottle. So you've got those, those beautiful vanilla kind of baked, baked bread flavors from the oak, um, this lovely acidity, and Chardonnay is such a really powerhouse kind of grape and can go well with everything. And we don't really use a whole lot of oak on this. Uh, we try to let the fruit show first and then maybe add the oak second. And that allows us to kind of let the, those grapes shine through. So let's try that. Okay, let, I guess let's try this. We're gonna use our fingers. I think we have silverware coming, I think. Or we can oh. drink wine. Sonoma County. Exactly. Okay, you right. know, I like Chef, that. Why, See, don't now, you, why don't you try um, the tapas? Tell I can't us what wait you to try it. Well, now we have the wine. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was busy over there, Mark, actually having to cook the entree. Mark was, you know, <laughs> hanging out, drinking wine, eating like some like tomato toast over there, making me work, you know, all that. Good life. So I'm going to try to buy this first because I'll be mm -hmm. honest, like when he was cooking that, that sounded fantastic. And mm -hmm. you too, your dessert? I was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, that's mm -hmm. creative. Made me feel like a loser mm -hmm. over here. <laughs> wow, great, Mark. Mm. Really delicious. Awesome seasoning, too. Really good. Mm. Wow, that's mm -hmm. And are wow. both of these dishes on the menu at the restaurant? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That's really good. I can't wait. I, really, I like the Maldon sea salt on top, right? Little, it's little really nice. Yes. Yeah, and that's a little kind of textural pop. And that, that's when you have salt and you have the think. texture of the salt. Oh, that's the best part. And like, but that's what tomatoes need. I mean, think about like a good tomato. You literally you pick it right fresh off the vine, nice and warm, and literally it's just olive oil, sea salt, and that's it. Mayonnaise. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> now, here, the here's the question. School. Is it best foods or is it Hellman's? Ooh. Oh. If my mother was from the East Coast, I don't want to say, but if I was going to do it, don't see Hellman's or best foods. But food. aren't they the <laughs> same? They are. That's they the whole okay, point. That's, that's why I say it's part. I always she, say it all the time. I'm going to confess something. Okay? Uh-oh. Don't say America Whip. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> don't wife, say it. This is, this is uh. serious. My wife <laughs> almost didn't marry me. Because my mother cooked with miracle. Oh my god. Oh, you know what? Man. I'm sorry, I gotta put this down. Just, school, there's man. a weird taste all of a sudden <laughs> happening. There's like some reaction. I don't quite understand what it was. It's it was a great potato salad. <laughs> okay, let's try the tuna. Okay. So for the tuna, like you guys saw, basically we seared the tuna real quick. The mm. espalette on the outside adds a little bit of heat back to the dish. Wow. So the idea is we're playing around with a little bit of the sweet tomatoes along with those little kind of tart kind of popping on the cherry tomatoes, especially mm. roasted off. And then you have that little kind of a little spice back in the esplet. Not spice e, a little spice sa. And then you have that umami from zucchini and squash, Ooh. the beautiful yellow tomato caspacho on the very bottom, and that white yeah. stuff, that snow, <laughs> oh. it's kind of fun. It just adds yeah. this kind of little like textural element back to Ooh, it. You have it. all the flavors of olive oil without being that kind of heavy, dense, traditional element of olive oil. Yeah. First of all, Super be fresh. beautiful dish. Yeah. Thank you. It's a Definitely. gorgeous Thank dish. You. It is. Mm, very refreshing too. Thank mm. you. And real light. And very light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so definitely that, something you want to eat on a hot day. Yeah. And that's the best part. Like, think about when it's like cold and rainy outside. Like, you were asking about heirloom tomatoes earlier. We are talking about tomatoes kind of out of season. It's cold, it's rainy, it's freezing. You got the fire going, right? We're talking about wintertime fire, by the way, guys. We're not talking about two weeks ago fire. <laughs> but like, you're sitting out there, and that's the time for like estufa. That's the time for like the braise. That's the time for that big cab. You know, you're sitting there and it's cold, you got your sweater on. Yeah. But like, now it's hot. 
it's warm. Like this, and that's what I love about food. Like food almost like dictates, it, it kind of tells you what you should be eating. Right now yeah. is that time for like bright, clean, sharp flavors mm -hmm. where, you know, in maybe like a month and a half, two months, November happens, starts getting cold. That's when you want to sit back with that big braise, those tomatoes, you know, that big mm -hmm. short ribs, the oxtails, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Love awesome. it. And that's Great what we use those canned awesome. tomatoes. Like Mark, we were talking about earlier, doing canned tomatoes. Like that's the best part. You preserve mm. them now, you use them later when you do that, those stews, those braises. Mm. I think this pairing is phenomenal. I think Great. the Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's it's so to good. Me, this nice. dish right here, the pairing of the Chardonnay, the tuna, the mm -hmm. lightness, the creativity. Yeah. That's Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. I love it. Just yeah. reminds me of when we first moved here. Oh my it's God. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, we just got a new pitchman at the restaurant. I love it. <laughs> Guys, can we please record that for a second? I'm like, so he's that's my new feed in the website. You're like, click in Valette Hillsburg and pay with Mark. I'm like, this is why I moved to Sonoma County. The brightness, the wine. Let's try <laughs> Let's try the um, right. Cristata. Okay, Sounds Tim. good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Like, you know, this is really kind of what we do with the restaurant here. It's a rustic preparation. It's a rustic presentation. Um, it's really trying to let those amazing uh, the, uh, tomatoes from the garden shine. I'm gonna and, eat it like pizza. And not a pizza. too sweet. And you know, I was really trying to make it so mm. it wasn't too mm. soupy and soppy. You know, mm. that was sort of a, a goal as I um, salted those tomatoes a little bit. So it's not it's an overly delicious. sweet dessert. It works. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. That's so good. And yeah. that honey inside of marshmallow is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so good, y'all. Awesome. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Like it's like a sweet pizza. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, <laughs> it's, it's really good. Cool. A little it, fresh. It almost has a, like a peachy kind of Mm -hmm. Flavor to it, you know. You can, you know, yeah. tomatoes are fruit. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can certainly get that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Like a peach tart, right? Like, yeah. like, yes, like exactly. you said, like a little uh -huh. peach galette kind of. Definitely, I like the fresh basil. You get those different layers of basil. The basil yeah. that's cooked sure. in and the crust on it. Yeah. And a little fresh yeah. basil on top for garnish. She was doubtful. I was, but you <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, it was delicious. You the tomato mm. dessert. Okay, yeah. well, great. All right, now we got to try out the wine, mm -hmm. right? Come in. It yeah. is almost five o'clock. It's mm -hmm. definitely time for a glass of wine, right? Four bottles, fifty fifty. So you get that lovely richness and buttery crust in there. I think mm. the tomatoes are show, showing through. You also get that honey. It's, it's mm. definitely lifting a, a type of sweetness from the tomatoes and that yeah. it's like a sweet, lovely sweet savory combo. Oh, and I, th I think this wine's pairing really lovely with it. The, the basil has like a peppery kind of bite to it. Mm -hmm. And Syrah nat naturally has this kind of black pepper tone, blackberry, uh, more structured kind of red wine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's pairing really well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Great pairing. In all be honest, up. this is not a bad Wednesday. No. <laughs> not bad. Sitting here eating some good food, yeah. amazing yeah. wines. Look at this view around us. Like, Unbelievable. But this is the best part of Summit County. It's like we got to take these little moments, right? Mm -hmm. Take that moment to sit back and savor mm -hmm. amazing wines. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for fantastic food. Just take these little moments. And I think Definitely. you guys definitely made my week. This is, <laughs> this is my yeah. favorite part of the week. Yeah. Hands I can down. honestly say this is the best day of in the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, six yeah. months. That's a long time. We're a resilient, we're a resilient <laughs> county, right? And yes. chefs are awfully resilient. I mean, we were going through a tough time not too long ago, but yeah. here we are, bounce back, enjoying this beautiful summer day. Semi normal. Yeah. Not yeah. too shabby. Yeah. But thank you guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Awesome yeah. We'll Cheers. just Cheers. pretend. We'll pretend. <laughs> so we've just <laughs> chosen our winner. Oh. And it is the winner of our Dine About Town package. It's three gift cards, three $100 gift cards to each of these chefs, amazing restaurants. And it is Martha Stevenson. Okay, hey. Martha? Hey. Um, congrats. We hope you're still there. That's my sister in law. It is? <laughs> oh, okay. It she, was real. My dad was hoping she would win, but anyways, I just want to thank. All of these chefs, Tim, Dustin, Mark, for being here. Thank you, Natalie, sure. for these perfect pairings. Thank you to Francis Ford Coppola for hosting us. And let's just all raise a glass to say thank you to the first responders, the healthcare professionals, and the everyday essential workers who have been just out there, you know, fighting wildfires, saving lives this entire year. Cheers, Cheers to you everybody. all. Cheers. Cheers. And come visit us in Sonoma County. Sonoma Yay. County, open Woo. for business. Open yeah. for business. Cheers. 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 Mm. You guys, this is so good. It really is. I really like the tart. I love the tart because like when you're making Wait, it, I love where'd the hamongo? I want to put some yeah. on my... Like how oh, those flavors go together. Here, <laughs>